Oh, there we go. Feels like a really good video. Too. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Just explore. That's half the fun of catching. This is usually a good reward right here. Oh, there's one. Doubles! Gosh, those are nice fish, man. Aren't they beautiful? Welcome to Angling Buzz presented by Fleet Farm. I'm Troy Linder. On today's show, we're talking about summertime panfish. You know, the lion's share of pan fishing occurs pretty much in the springtime when the fish are concentrated in the shallow waters and also in the winter. But summertime can be absolutely fantastic for bluegill and crappie. But they do act like other game fish. They can make dramatic seasonal movements. And as you know, you got to find them first before you can catch them. And today we're joined by panfish aficionado, Joel Nelson. Joel, how do you initially start to hunt panfish during the summer? You know, uh, summer panfish, uh, it's really a great time when you start thinking summer because it's a great way to get kids into fishing. Uh, everybody's off of school. You kind of find it's an easy way to take them and get them into a lot of action. At this time, through the majority of the summer, panfishing really revol revolves around deep weed edges. And specifically, if you look at any contour map and find a main large lake point or sunken islands that are covered with weeds, and the odds are high you're going to find panfish somewhere along them and really the best depth of water is going to depend on the lake at hand. Some of our clear lakes and rivers, you know, they're going to have uh, areas with weeds down to 15, 20 foot of water, but in dark water lakes, uh, maybe southern parts of the, uh, of the Midwest and beyond, your deep weed edge may only be six, eight feet of water, so you really have to spend some time on the water body of interest to comb these weed edges use your electronics, really hunt them through. And on those hot sunny days, panfish may suspend super high in the water column. And uh, you know, in that case, you can easily see fish on the electronics and other times they may be hunkered down on weeds. So it's a variable time to find panfish. They can really be scattered, but your electronics along weeds and weed edges are really gonna be the key to start finding. Some of our viewers have to be asking, what type of weeds are we looking for? Do panfish prefer one weed over others? You know, in my experience, I've really seen panfish relate quite heavily to cabbage. I really think cabbage could be the best, the best of the best. Uh, but coontail and even milfoil are really close second, and, and, and they are preferred by literally all game fish species. So uh, the reason why, I, I simply don't know, but at the end of the day, any of these weed beds, specifically cabbage, but coontail and milfoil too, you're going to look for distinct wall drops. You're going to look for large inside turns. Those are really my favorite areas to concentrate fish. And sometimes hard bottom, either sand or rock that abuts up against that deepest weed edge or a weed edge point, they can be great spots to find schools of panfish. But another thing you have to do is really realize that these fish are moving up and down in the water column depending on the weather. Now, you know, kind of during adverse weather, panfish tend to bury in the weeds. You're really not going to see a lot of them. And during warm, stable conditions, panfish will suspend high in the weeds and even wander out away from weed lines. And as we get later into midsummer and beyond, that's when you really start to see fish push off of the weed lines and they become a lot easier to see in your electronics and a lot easier to target because of that. So what are your preferred presentations to find and catch those fish? You know, that really depends on the situation. I've been a huge fan of jig trolling. Uh, I, I really think it's a technique that people need to learn how to do. And it's one of those things where you just simply tie on a small jig, uh, look off the weed lines and toss that back behind the boat, drag it along at a consistent speed in the consistent area where you're seeing fish on the electronics. And uh, that jig and plastic combination is really just something that you hold off to the side and let a fish hit and set the hook. And speed is really critical to that approach. So is depth. And you control your depth both by speed but also by the weights of jigs. And in an ideal situation, you've got multiple people in the boat and everybody's pulling slightly different weights until we figure out the speed and the weight that presents the bait at the precise depth that we're looking at. Now, I generally like that bait if we're shallower and earlier in the season, kind of skipping over the weed tops. Um, but some of these weed beds are really large and the fish in them are in relatively small areas. Once you dial down and find a 
part of the weed edge that the fish are at, you can really start employing a variety of presentations to get after them. That might be vertical, if it's deep enough water, it could be as simple as casting up to an inside turn in those weed beds and really whether you're fishing floats, small spin jigs, even micro crankbaits, once you've kind of got them dialed in from jig trolling, you can employ a variety of situations to catch summer panfish in really your favorite way possible. Thanks, Joel, for sharing that great information. You know, just like with any other fish, you get to fine tune the presentation based on their attitude. Hey, stay with us after this commercial break. We have more primetime panfish as Angling Buzz continues. Want to learn how to catch more and bigger fish? Well, we've got the place for you. Introducing the Fish Head Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Largemouth, smallmouth, walleye, catfish, musky, pike and panfish, open water or on the ice. Check out Fish Head TV to rent, buy, or become a Fish Head member today. Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis endorsed lodge in all of Ontario. And they're the four time finalists for the best Orvis lodge in all of North America. They feature cordon blue trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. Because boaters know and follow Minnesota's aquatic invasive species laws, 98% of lakes are not known to have any zebra mussels. 95% are not known to have any kind of invasive animals or plants. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. Customer first, that's their mission at Don DeLinger Auto. It's not just about the sale, it's about giving you peace of mind for as long as you own that vehicle. Don DeLinger is home to the lifetime powertrain warranty for new and pre-owned vehicles, plus 10 years of roadside assistance. They have an incredible variety of the most popular vehicles and offer pickup and drop off for service. Stop in to experience the Don DeLinger difference today. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Coming up next, we have our timely topic feature, and we're going to join Dan Linder and Jeremy Smith to find some summertime big bluegills. Whoa, look at that, Dan O, huh? That is what we are after. You know what? In the summertime, one critter that doesn't get a lot of attention, or critters, I should say, are bluegills. It seems like after the spawn, people lose their focus on catching these magnificent fish. And today, Dan and I are going to talk about catching mid-summer panfish, bluegills. We're fishing a lake where the fish are starting to stack up on the weed edge, and boom, Dan's got one right now as well. So we're going to employ a technique that's not often used for panfish, but we'll show you why it's such a great way to catch these big monsters. All right, you can see here as we're driving around, you can see in traditional 2D sonar, this is the weed edge here. And now look, if you look very closely, you'll see right on the edge of the weeds, you see these little white dots? And you see a few more just over here? These are prob those are probably three really nice bluegills, maybe a few more scattered about, but that's exactly the kind of stuff we're looking for. So for us right now, it's finding the edge of the weeds like that, and boom, once you know it, there's the bluegills. And the thing with fishing these panfish, bulk control can be pretty darn important. You can't be too far off the edge, and uh, what, what's really nice is that often panfishing, you're going really slow, 
And the spot lock, lock feature we've got on here is just ideal. If Dan catches a fish right there, I just push a button, we anchor in, and we can both just sit and beat on that hole for a long time. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Nice, this feels like a good one, Dano. Yeah. Oh yeah, another just beautiful, beautiful bluegill. Check that out. And so what Dan and I are using to catch these bluegills is a technique that's been popularized in bass fishing. However, it's an incredible delivery system for just about any bait, soft bait or live bait, and for almost all different critters. I'm gonna get this guy back and I'll share with you what it is. It's the drop shot. In this case, the VMC spin shot. Now, most of the time you hear about drop shotting and bass fishing, and it is a very effective way to catch bass, but we use this technique for walleye fishing, we use it for bass fishing, and of course, it's like right now, pan fishing, and Dan's hooked up. <laughs> now, on the end of a drop shot, you can fish a lot of different stuff. Bluegills are one of those critters where it just pays to have live bait. Right now, the, the bite seems to be really hot on a leech, but many times if they're super aggressive, you get the right conditions, you can get them on soft plastic. So I always have a lot of soft plastics in the boat. A few of my favorites are just a little inch and a half tube, this little big bite tube here. I love that baby. And for whatever reason, that yellow and chartreuse has always been good for me. A little like cricket profile. Of course, gills love crickets, grasshopper style. And then of course, even little minnow profiles like that can get the attention of of big bluegills. So when it comes to drop shotting, really anything that you'd put on a jig works just as well as it does in a drop shot. So for us today, it seems to be primarily a leech, but don't ever go out without plastics because they're a lot more efficient to fish and when the fish are on them, you can just process a lot more fish a lot quicker than having to go through the trouble of live bait. Hey, if you've never tried drop shotting, you have to for big bluegills like this, it works big time. As you can see there, drop shotting goes well beyond just the bass world. After this short commercial break, we have our buzz bite reports as angling buzz continues. On the lake, in the woods, or on the ice, keep powered up with Bold North Outdoors portable power stations. Our rugged multi-service power station is marine grade, weatherproof, and powered by long-lasting lithium phosphate batteries. Charge cell phones, tablets, and GoPros, or power fans, lights, fish finders, underwater cameras, and more. Recharge anywhere with our solar panel charger. Wherever your adventure takes you, you'll have current to be connected with Bold North portable power stations. From the kennel to the coop, whatever the season, Fleet Farm has everything to keep your animals happy and healthy. Whether it's keeping the backyard birds well-fed season, mastering those retrieval skills season, or wondering who takes care of who season, there's a reason people say if Fleet Farm doesn't have it, you don't need it, because we have it all. Fleet Farm, built for real life. Lake Vermilion, explore, relax, reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wallet. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do, you'll never get bored. Rooms with a view, we got them. Lake Vermilion, four seasons of fun. can't choose the weather, but you can choose outerwear that works. Technical apparel. Rain gear. Soft shells. Sunwear.
When you need to stay comfortable all day, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. For our first report, let's get a multi-species fishing report from Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. Hey, we're starting to get into our dog days of summer up here, but there's still plenty of fish in action. If you never tried lead core trolling, August is a great month to get into it up here in Vermilion. I really like pulling these number seven glass shad wraps in either the perch or the crayfish pattern. That works really, really well on Vermilion. There's a lot of sand flats that 16 to 24 foot depths and uh, just get in those basins and it's a great way to locate fish and then once you get on some fish too you can slow down and pull live bait rigs in those. Just fishing live bait rigs and uh, getting into a few walleyes today. Uh, the musky bite, uh, think rocks. Your big blades, your big cowgirls, baits like that are really producing muskies right now and think your rocky reefs that's been putting out a lot of fish. Your smallmouth bass, they're out off of those that first break, a little deeper also, that 15 to 24 foot stuff, Ned rigs, wacky fishing, drop shop, working well on that. And Northern Pike too, with these warmer water temperatures, they're out a little deeper than you think right now. If you're not finding them on the deep weeds, start fishing some of the rocks, start trolling some of that deeper water, and uh, we'll get you in some pike action. Next up, let's head over to Leech Lake where Jason Freed shares some of his favorite walleye baits for catching fish right now, as well as a musky and bass report. Leech Lake right now, the name of the game when you want to catch walleyes is to power fish. What do I mean by that? You want to use jigging wraps, shiver minnows, ripping wraps. You want to troll crankbaits, number five, number seven shad wraps, or flicker shads right now. Or power corking are all working to catch Leech Lake walleyes right now. There's tons of bait in the system, which means there's tons of competition to try to catch those walleyes. And so power fishing is the name of the game right now. Move, use your electronics, find active walleyes. If they don't bite, move on to the next school and try to catch those fish. Musky fishing, move to the main lake rocks right now. The fish are starting to move out into the main lake rocks. They're chasing bucktails, twitch baits, or topwaters. All seem to be working right now. But we're starting to see more and more active muskies as we move into August. And then in terms of bass fishing, if you haven't been out and tried to experience bass fishing on Leech Lake, now is the time. Smallmouth are starting to show up more and more on main, on main lake rocks, as well as largemouth in some of the bays like Boy Bay and, head, and Headquarters Bay. So right now, you know, there's lots of options on Leech Lake. Power fishing, being aggressive is the name of the game if you want to catch fish. Now let's head over to Wisconsin where Jeff Evans has some information on the bite on Lake Superior and the Hayward Lakes area. Water temperatures are finally starting to cool down in the Hayward Lakes area in northwest Wisconsin and on Lake Superior. Around Hayward, we're seeing the mid-70s on most days, and on Lake Superior, mid-60s to low-70s, depending on the day. On the inland lakes, we are catching some super walleyes, trolling open water with crawler harnesses in anywhere from 25 to 35 feet of water. I like to use my electronics to locate bait fish and then use snap weights to get those crawler harnesses to the appropriate depth. It's usually around 15 or 20 feet. We're also getting some great smallmouth bass on rock reefs in anywhere from 15 to 25 feet of water using Nico rigs and Ned rigs. On Lake Superior, we're trolling crankbaits behind planer boards and catching some awesome walleyes with some big numbers days and some big fish as well. Uh, you can use deep diving cranks or use snap weights to get shallow divers down to the right depth in anywhere from 15 out to 40 feet of water. Pro, new from the makers of Seafoam Motor Treatment. Marine Pro is a complete marine fuel system treatment for all types of marine engines. Just pour it in. When added to boat fuel, Marine Pro works to clean and lubricate critical engine areas, stabilize stored fuel up to two years, and help protect the entire fuel system from bad fuel and corrosion. Help your marine engine run smoother and last longer with Seafoam Marine Pro. Available now at Fleet Farm. Like many of you, I've had back issues. From the pounding waves of Lake Erie. To over 30 years of competitive angling. And a lifetime on the water, but not anymore. 
Smooth moves change the game. It's a must have for me and my clients. It's like my boat is floating on air. They're easy to install, fully adjustable. It makes a day on the water a whole lot more comfortable. Smooth your ride with Smooth Moves. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. Today we're talking pan fishing. You want a variety of different lures, insect profiles, mineral profiles. We're going to go a few of them, hard baits and soft baits right here. I'm going to start with VMC, a little boot tail. Uh, boot tail design that you normally see like in bass baits or walleye baits right here. Downsized version of it. This is a great little jig from VMC. And an old school option right down the line here from Johnson. This is the beetle spin. I, I threw this growing up. A uh, little, got a little blade on there and obviously the, the beetle design on this. This thing is just, it's been around for a, for a long time and the reason is it just catches fish. From Northland Tackle, the Thumper Crappie King. As you can see, a little bit bigger uh, profile on this. It does have a blade on the bottom for a little bit of flash, a little bit of vibration. Really nice. This is from Northland Tackle, the Crappie King. And from Kalins, Kalins has a wide variety of soft plastics. This is one of their newer options. This is the crappie scrub. You can see it has two little, almost it's almost like a frog design with two little legs off the back that kick like that. And panfish, they can get kind of touchy. So they're having a few different options, different colors, natural colors, bright colors, and, and different uh, tail designs is important. And this is one option from Kalins, the crappie scrub. And for downsizing your bait, the impulse smelt from Northland Tackle. You can see how small this is. It's a very small jig head, really light jig head. If they get very touchy and they're in that mood, you can also throw this below bobbers uh, and floats. This is a really nice option. A uh, little smelt from Northland Tackle. And hard baits have really come on the scene, you know, in, in the last couple of years for pan fishing for bigger bluegill and bigger crappie. A couple options here from Rapala, starting out with the slab wrap. Uh, this is a nice little perch, you got a nice little perch color here, uh, glow in the dark. And this can be cast and fished vertical, a couple different sizes. Also from Rap with the Rip and Rap, you think of Rip and, <laughs> rip and Raps, you might think of walleye fishing or bass fishing, but they have smaller ones, the Ultra Light, you know, a couple options and sizes in the Ultra Light series have actually also thrown these, uh, they work for trout as well. They got a little bit of rattle to them. Uh, UV colors in this, um, a lot of action. Light line, you can cast these out really far and cover water. For fishing line from Northland Tackle, you know, you, a light fishing line, these fish don't get too big, but you want a, a little bit, you know, fishing around cover, six pound line, you want something that's abrasion resistant, but you can also cast and feel the baits uh, work and, and, and be able to feel those bites. This is the bionic line from Northland Tackle, six pound test, this is a nice a uh, nice all around line, I think, for pan fishing. You can go as light as three pound if you want, but the six pound is excellent. And from St. Croix, this is a great series for pan fish rods, the Triumph series. This happens to be the six foot, six inch light version. There's a few different models to choose from. You can cast small baits out uh, really far with this, and also enough backbone in here to set the hook if you got, a, if you got your bait far away from the boat. And a really nice series, a very affordable series from St. Croix. This is the Triumph Light Action 6.6. And finally, from Clam Outdoors, the Fortis Series Net. This is the panfish version. They also make a bass, a walleye, a musky version with different uh, diameters and hoop depth, but this is perfect for pan fishing, a nice, uh, nice soft plastic 
mesh in here that's not going to get snagged up. You got a glide lock technology that easily uh, deploys this and stores it. Handle extends out 65 inches. You also flip it around right here. You can see uh, built-in ruler engraved on here as well. This is the Forda series from Clam Outdoors. All these products that are available online at fleetfarm.com, also your local Fleet Farm store. And one final product from Bold North Outdoors, the Portable Power Station 100. And we're gonna go over this kind of quickly. You got, turn it on right here. You got your power meter right here. You can see how much juice you have in this. Couple ter terminals here for your sonar uh, GPS units. You have a 12 volt accessory plug in there. A couple USB uh, ports right there. You turn this on and if you have glow in the dark jigs, you can fire them up right there. Also in low light, you have a light source as well. This is from Bold North Outdoors. And right now it's time for our technique of the week. They put these massive log cribs um, out in every, pretty much every one of them is out in about 20 feet of water or so. And they stand about five, six feet high and they're giant log structures, almost like a log home, uh, big square cribs. And you'll find crappies, bluegills, perch, bass. Um, the pike will come around and feed off of them. Uh, very diverse fishery around these cribs. So, you know, a lot of different baits that we've been using today. Um, guys use you know ice fishing. Uh, we've been using a lot of small tungsten you know with meat and plastic um, but one of the things when they get finicky or when we get over some of these deeper water fish uh, or fishing on cribs is I like to use some spoons. Uh, put a wax worm on on there and when that thing flutters uh, when it goes down towards the bottom it's got a really nice flutter and that wax worm kind of stays up on top. When you're fishing these spoons um, the versatility of them is actually uh, quite impressive. You can cast these and swim them back along weed edges, put them underneath a, you know, a float and actually swim them at a certain depth. Um, otherwise what I'm doing here over the tops of these cribs is loading it up with a few wax worms and uh, just vertical jigging it. You, know, you can see that nice slow flutter um, and just vertical jigging it right over the top of that crib uh, just like we're finesse fishing them you know, through the ice. So um, you know, I just look at it as I've got a seven foot ice rod in my hand uh, with a small spoon and we're gonna ice fish for these bluegills in the middle of July. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Ooh, this feels that's like a bluegill. Good, that's gonna be a gill, huh? This feels like a bluegill. Feels It'll like a, a really good, good bluegill. Uh, now it's crappying out. No, nope, now it's going bluegill. Oh, we got a dandy. Oh, yeah, yeah look a, at this oh, one. Oh, there we, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> oh, look at this oh, giant. Oh, that's yeah. a beauty. That, my there. friends, is what we come to central Wisconsin and fish for. You know, just explore. That's half the fun of catching. This is usually a good reward right here. Big old Wisconsin bluegills. You know, this time of year, it's great for panfish, but we do want to remind you, selective harvest. If you do catch those big bluegill, please release them. Okay, next week's show, we're talking about hook, line, and sinker. And as always, we want to help remind you to stop the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water clean, drain, dry. And thank you for joining us this week. I'm Troy Linder, and we'll see you next time. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Hi, Brian Rostock. Lee Talkin here. Top water's been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bass like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. Fresh report from Lake of the Woods. Grand Traverse Bay. Get out, get fishing. Have fun. Rock and roll. Take care. Want to learn how to catch more oh, and bigger me, fish like largemouth and smallmouth bass? Or maybe you want to learn how to catch big walleye, monster catfish, or giant panfish all year round. Well, we got the place for you. Introducing the Fishhead Video Library. Now you can enjoy hour after hour of educational videos right on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, or even stream videos right to your TV. Is bass fishing your gig? We'll teach you everything you need to know about catching more largemouth and smallmouth bass. Or maybe you want to learn how to catch panfish, like crappies and giant bluegills. Yep, we got you covered. After watching our panfish videos, you'll know when, where, and how to catch panfish no matter what the season. Check out Fishhead TV to rent, buy, or become a Fishhead member today.